Well, that was the easiest cleanup of my life. Now I just have to figure out how to get all this stuff home. Sounds like you could use some help from an old friend, Dust. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? I see you're still explaining things with gunpowder instead of words. <laughs> Not much has changed, huh? Must have something to do with that Arctic Express everyone's talking about. Soap perfumes must be messing with your head. What do you mean? These grubs deserved it. Can you help me bring some of this stuff back to my new base? It's actually one you haven't seen yet. I could give you a little tour of it, too. Ah, oh, shoot, I might as well. I think I still owe you one anyway. Well, there she is. Home sweet home. Now there's a thing of beauty. You always did know how to make a statement. If you guys like that intro, please feel free to drop a like and a sub. It takes only a second and it lets me know that I'm doing something right. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Walker V2 for the original inspiration behind this base. Starting off our base tour, we have the Mini Satori and Mr. Man style quick disconnectable external TC. Placing a twig roof right here will allow us to disconnect them, and placing those frames back will just as easily allow us to reconnect. Coming in our gatehouse, we can see we have perfect visibility of the outside, and great visibility onto the inside of the compound. Coming in our wide gap airlock, we have a window here we can remove to give us access to our drone shop. And we have another vending machine here that plugs our original starter airlock. Coming up, we can see three loot rooms as well as two mobility chutes that go up to the next floor and one that comes down into the starter. Down here we have three loot rooms, or you could use one of these for furnaces, and we can see our upkeep here. This was our starter airlock, which is now plugged with a vending machine. We can come on up to the third floor where we have three separated loot rooms as well as another workbench, some lockers, and anything else you might want up here. At this point we have three mobility options to go up or down, all of which contain retakes into the shooting floor. Our next floor has our bedrooms which have lockers that are separated so they can't be splashed easily, and three access points into the shooting floor. We basically have infinite angles around our compound both inside and out. We've sectioned the shooting floor off and we have these awesome breach peaks. I put a ladder hatch in here which allows you to quickly traverse from the compound into the breach peak or vice versa. We also have a couple different sets of roof peaks here so if your auto turrets aren't online yet you have some way to defend your roof. We can open any of these garage doors to get on top of the roof where we see a bunch of auto turrets, a bunch of windmills, and a pretty sick logo made out of Christmas lights. We can actually start off by just making a one by one with a double door on the front. We can place our TC in the back left or back right corner and always make sure to put a code lock on it. We can expand out an airlock on this with another double door and a wood wall on the left. Just note that we're going to chop this out later. And this one by one will be enough to secure your build location. After that we can expand out with the following foundations. And we can wall in all but where this door is. It should look something like this. We can then put a ceiling on everything except the one triangle next to the door. This will be our jump up. Build your jump up here and then seal the top like a normal jump up.
Coming back in the front entrance, we can finish off our airlock by adding another single door frame and sealing this off with a window whenever we get it. We can get rid of our starter doors and chop this out with a machete. And place double door frames down on all of these sockets. Get sheet metal doors down and garage doors when you have them. I'm going to use this space in the early game for six furnaces, just because we don't really need all the loot storage yet, and furnaces are way more valuable right now. We can come over to the far right and create a loot room, and also build this triangle off of it for the main loot room. Feel free to use whatever loot room design you like here. I'm just doing four boxes in each just to make the video easy. And after that, feel free to place down any deployables you might need in your starter. So your tier one and tier two workbench can go right here with a small box under it. And on the other side, we can fit a mixing table, research bench, or whatever else you might want. You can see a mixing table fits perfectly here without obstructing the doorway at all. And there we go, we have our starter unit. If you're planning on just logging off at this point, you might want to upgrade the back half of it to metal, so then you have a seven rocket total raid cost. At this point, I'm going to upgrade everything to its final grade, but just keep in mind, you can do this at any time. I don't expect you to have all of the sheet metal and HQM yet. And then we'll come off of every single side and add a triangle foundation. After that, we'll come to each of the three squares and honeycomb it. Again, I'm using the final grade here, but just use whatever resources you have at the time. After you're done, it should look like this. Coming back up to our second floor, we can begin enclosing it just like you see. And in this spot, we'll use a double door frame and just seal it off with a sheet metal double door. In these two triangles, we're going to create jump ups. Make sure on top of these jump ups you use a half wall and not a full wall. Then we'll seal off the top with a double door. Keep in mind you can always reuse the double doors that you had in your core before you upgraded to garage doors. Then we'll slap a roof on this entire floor. And just like that, we've sealed off our second floor and honeycombed our TC. Now we can start putting together the interior of the second floor by building out three loot rooms just like the floor below it. garage doors on all of the sockets that you can afford to at the time and then build out the loot rooms however you like. The two triangle loot rooms I'm using four large boxes and the square loot room I'm using six. This isn't the most efficient layout for either of these but it's the fastest to do and it also gives you large box storage as opposed to a bunch of barbecues and small boxes which in a real wipe are super inconvenient. And under each of the jump ups, you can feel free to put shotgun traps, auto turrets, or whatever you like. And just like that, this is our first expansion.
Getting external TCs down as soon as possible is essential for securing your build location. We'll start off by coming to each of our honeycomb parts and building off with a square and two triangles just like this. Add a low wall on the top just in wood to reconnect it back to the base. Build off of each of the three remaining sides with a triangle, square, triangle buildup. After this, build four squares off of it and delete the rest of the buildup. Come back with triangles until we get to this point where we'll add a square and the final triangle. Then complete the wide gap buildup like this. We can either delete these triangles or just downgrade them to wood to increase mobility. I'm putting all of the necessary frames on as well. And then we can complete our build up with a square triangle here and then our gatehouse. Just keep in mind you don't actually need this triangle foundation here after these frames are attached. And then we'll finish up our external TC with the following build out. We're building the standard mini Satori and Mr. Man style disconnectable TC here, which I'm sure you've seen in a lot of bases. The way that this is done, it's secured from six rockets. And all that's left is to reconnect the frames at the top here. This is what the full build out looks like and now we can finish our gatehouse. Everything else on the gatehouse can just be done in stone. We'll put windows on the outside and embrasures on the inside. If we have both of our doors facing inward they'll create an airlock here as well. If you don't want that feel free to just swap one to rotate the other way. Coming up to the top, we can make some turret pods here, or we can just have a single turret in the middle. Build twig off of either side here to place both of your barricades, and your gatehouse is complete. At this point, get together 15 high walls and place them just how you see. And just like that, you've completed your compound and external TCs. Now it's time to get your large furnaces down and get to smelting. Before putting the third floor on, we have to make a choice here where our airlock is. We can either use a shop front in a frame like this, or if we want to have a drone shop vending machine, we can use a window frame and a window here. Then we can put honeycomb on every side except for the airlock. This will build out like you see. Just keep in mind, eventually this will be a second story entrance, but for now we can keep the starter airlock open. Coming over to the other two sides, we can honeycomb this just like normal. After this step, everything should be nice and symmetrical except for the airlock side. Off of this last square, build half height walls and a jump up here with window frames on top. These will be our retakes back into the shooting floor. Then we can repeat that on the other two existing jump ups. Then we'll finish off this floor by walling everything in. I'm doing the honeycomb right now, but if you don't have the resources, that's totally fine. Just wall on the inside. Then we'll put a roof on everything.
slap garage doors on these roof exits, and then we can begin building up the three loot rooms in here. We're gonna use the double triangles for each of these loot rooms and just slap four boxes into them. We can cap off our honeycomb out here, and then we've got our third floor expansion complete. To build our shooting floor, we'll build off of these existing frames to the third floor. Then we'll attach squares to the core of the base, and these triangles to the externals. Place window frames along the outside edge. Coming to the raised foundations here, we can build up with two frames, add a floor and a floor frame, as well as a couple low walls. Make sure to get a ladder hatch in that floor frame, and then stack another set of windows on top of it. We can build our roof tiles here, and then slap down a double door frame and a single door frame. Putting these double door frames in the shooting floor will allow us to section it off. And then we can seal our jump up here and add one of our roof peaks to the top of it. Keep in mind you'll want to use a horizontal embrasure here, not vertical. Two door frames go here and then two walls go next to it. We can put either window frames or single door frames on here. At this point we can choose whether we want batteries up here or we want lockers. If you do put a battery up here, just put the locker next to the bed. Each of your beds can go in just like this. And then on our shooting floor retakes, we can put a horizontal embrasure on each of these. The last thing to do up here is to seal off the roof. Just in stone, we can go along the entire outside and seal it off like this. Once we get to the roof peak, we'll add half height walls and a ceiling like this. Finish up by adding your last turret pod here. and then these roof tiles facing outward. We can also add windmill towers up here. Uh, we can build up two and then add some triangles to it. And just like that, we have spots for three windmills. Slap your garage doors on here and you don't actually need a single door in the door frame because people can't get through anyways. And we can slap down six turrets on the roof. To increase our door raid path, we can come into our wide gap airlock here and get rid of this door and plug it with a vending machine. At this point, we'll put a ladder hatch here so we can go and have a second story entrance. Keep in mind you have to have the vending machine in before the ladder hatch. We can also replace any double sheet doors with garage doors. On our third floor, we can finish building out our loot rooms, and feel free to add either your tier 2 or tier 3 workbench, whichever one you don't have in the core. We can HQM this as well to protect it from 23 rockets and a pummel raid. And down in the core, we can replace the 6 furnaces here with a loot room. At this point, I assume you have large furnaces, and there's plenty of other space in the base to fit those 6. That's less fortified. And just like that, we have built the mini Yeti. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content, and I hope you have an awesome force wipe.